Hi everyone, this is a free lecture from my course, Learn Maya, A Beginner's Guide to Creating Realistic Scenes. You can get the full 14-hour course for only $10 if you follow the link in the description. Hope you enjoy. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the Arnold Render View. So the Arnold Render View is a special viewport which allows you to use special features inside the Arnold Renderer. So let's have a look at this. So if I go to the Arnold menu here and go to Arnold Render View, you can see we've got this window here and it's just like the Arnold, uh, the render view that comes with uh, Maya, except we've got a few extra features. So let's go into window, toolbar icons and just turn all of these on. So I'm just going to turn on 3D manipulation and this will just give you little buttons here. So it just make it easier for us to look at all the different features. Okay. And then I'm going to also turn on inside the window uh, option, the shape picking as well. Okay. So now we should have a bunch of options on the top there. Okay. So let's have a look at creating a light. So I'm going to go to Arnold lights and sky dome light just to see something. Okay. This is not part of the tutorial, just so you can see something. So in order to see something here to start rendering, you can press space bar. Okay. And it's going to, update the view there. It's going to give you an IPR view and you can actually move around this viewport just like a viewport. And that's one of the special features. So if we go to the perspective here, this is the camera that's rendering. So if I change it to perspective, uh, remember we locked our shot cam, so we can't actually move that around. So if I go to perspective and use my move tools, you can see that I can't move. If I'm hold, if I hold down alt and use my left mouse button, I can't actually rotate around. But if you were to turn on 3D manipulation, this button here, okay, now I can move around just like a viewport. Okay, so that's pretty handy. And so you can, the, the cool thing about this is that you can just dock this and it's going to use your whole view rather than using up a, a, a viewport. Okay, so now I don't need my viewport. I can actually just move around and see what's going on. Okay. And um, so the other thing you can do is select objects. So you can click here. This is called shape picking. And this becomes really handy when you're near the end when you're adjusting shaders and you can just click on them and just go to the shader, you know, and just click and have a look at the different shaders on the different objects. And again, you don't have to go to a viewport here, you can just click in here, and it's going to come up into the um, attribute editor. So that's pretty handy. So this is 3D manipulation and shape picking. The other thing you can do is isolate things. So this button here isolates uh, the render. So you will see that your render will slow down as soon as you start adding shaders and you know fog and all sorts of things that we're going to add. So if you press this button here, you can just concentrate on the, the thing that you're shading. So if you're if I was working on the candle, I can just click on this and whatever I've selected is going to be rendered and it's going to go really fast because it's going to just render that object. Okay. And remember, it's not going to render it like it's separate. It will render it like it's part of the scene. So that's pretty handy. So it still includes all the shadows and all the interactions, but it's just going to show you that object. So that's really handy. I use that quite a lot. And you can see that it progressively refines this. And that's because in here it's got this uh, window uh, progressive refinement. Sorry, it's the wrong uh, window there. The, wrong menu there. So render progressive refinement and you want to have that on just so you get a nice update so that you can see things, you know, happening. Otherwise you won't be able to see them happening. It's going to be very slow. Okay. So I'm just going to turn off isolate. And uh, then we've got this special feature here called debugging. And this is basically allows you to see different aspects of your render. So this is shading. And at the moment, because we haven't got any textures, there's not going to be a massive difference here, but um, we'll see this later on. So if we go to basic, this will give you a very fast render of your geometry. And this is really handy to see if your geometry is inside out, for example, or to see how your your actual um, displacements are working or things like that. So it's really handy to just see your geometry and it's super fast. Okay, there's no lighting involved. Lighting will just have just the lighting. Okay, so it will, it will remove all the shaders and it will have just the lighting. And this is good if you want to adjust your lighting. And um, normally you would start off with just a plain shader and then adjust your lighting, which is what we'll do 
uh, in the next lesson and then we would go in and assign our shaders so all our different materials like wood and all that sort of stuff okay but this is good if you want to just see what's going on and just make it a little bit faster as well once you add shaders it becomes a little bit slower occlusion is uh, as the name implies is the ambient occlusion of this um, scene and you can see what it looks like with an ambient occlusion wireframe is the actual wireframe of the objects that you're rendering which is quite handy and all this stuff is basically passes that you can actually create yourself using a AI utility um, shader and I'll show you that a bit later but basically what that allows you to do is uh, use any of these things as a texture okay so if you're making your show reel for example and you wanted to have a wireframe and then switch to a, a full fully shaded version which you often see in show reels you can do that or you can even combine it with different things so you can have your wireframe you know and then multiply on an occlusion like this and it looks pretty cool uh, for your show reel as well so let's carry on uh, we've got normals here we've got uvs primitive id which will give you uh, individual triangles here object which is quite handy if you want to vary different uh, the same object but have different colors on the object okay so you can see uh, and it's also useful for id passes for when you for when you composite things in other compositing programs okay and then we've got barycentric which is uh, again triangles individual triangles and that's the end of it and then you go to isolate which is what we had before i think yeah isolate there we go okay so that's basically the special features that you can use inside um, this Arnold render view. I'm just going to switch this back to the top here, shading. And um, you've also got this section here, which is for AOVs. And AOVs are a way of, you know, splitting out your render. And so you render once and you can have things like your reflections, your diffuse and, and your lighting all in a separate image. So you can composite that together later. So you add those in the render view here. If I go to Arnold render. Um, render settings excuse me if i go to the render settings go to aov then i can add any of these things and i'll just show you an example so for example if i just take diffuse and just add that okay if i go over here i can see diffuse and you can see what that looks like okay so let me just add something that looks slightly different uh, something like z which is the depth okay this is the z channel and it's super bright so if you want to see that properly you can take the uh, gamma down and you can see it a little bit better but it's still pretty crazy and um, that's because it's, it's, it's just a slight difference in color between the different values that's why it looks white but it's not actually white um, I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to remove the diffuse okay so these will come out as separate images when you batch render and then you can use them to composite inside a, a, an external program okay but this allows you to see those those images uh, whereas in the render view you wouldn't see those so let me just show you some of the other features and uh, these are sort of the ones that you get inside the, um, the standard Maya view anyway but just to show you these so you've got things like exposure and gamma so if you want to just see this uh, a little bit brighter you can increase this and then if you want to see it with less gamma or more gamma you can you can decrease this if you want to to reduce the uh, to increase the amount of contrast uh, and then you can reset that by pressing these buttons here this is the lookup table so you can switch to rec 709 if you wanted to if you're using a mac for example and uh sorry 1.8 if you're using a mac and um switch back to srgb so also we've also got um render region so we can press this button here and we can choose a region to render which we use quite a lot often so you can take this little corner here you can see it's got a little highlighted corner and increase that and change it okay and it's going to update every time you move it you can also take that little crosshair the little uh, target in the middle and just move it around to see that part of the render and you can turn that off if you want to render the whole thing you can also press stop which will stop it from updating and then you can make the changes to your shaders for example i could select this you know make some changes to the shader and then i can press play again because the reason is uh, 
sometimes when your steam is slow, you know, you just want to make your changes and then see the result. So you don't want it to carry on calculating every time you change every little um, attribute. Okay. So if you're, especially if your computer is uh, slower or if you've got a heavy scene, so you can press spacebar again to start that again as well. Um, sometimes when you make a change to your scene, it's not instantly updated. So most things are updated, but not everything is updated. Sometimes if you add a texture or if you add something to do with the geometry, like a displacement or something, it doesn't always update. So you can press um, this button here, uh, sorry, the stop, and then you can press this button here, the refresh render, okay, to update that. And if it still doesn't update, for example, if you know you've added something and it, it doesn't update, you can also go to the uh, render and then you can say update full screen, uh, full scene, and that's um, command U or control U. And that will update uh, it will export the scene to arnold again okay so because arnold is a separate program it's basically taking this geometry and then dumping it into arnold and then arnold will render it okay it happens really quickly but if you want to do that again you can press this button here to abort the render you can press escape so if i press uh, start here press space bar i can press escape to just stop i want it to just calm down and just stop sometimes it just carries on and you just want it to stop because you want to change something and it's slowing down your computer. Uh, those are the two main features you kind of use in this section here. All the rest of it you can get from all these uh, buttons here. We can also see on an alpha here using this button here. This is the alpha channel. And uh, you can also press this button here to see different channels like the red, green and blue. There's no difference between the red, green and blue here, but you can switch between those. And then we can also go to this section here, this toolbar here, and you can see uh, the rendering and it will tell you how long something took. And also it tells you the samples that you've set in your render settings here, which is the quality. So this stuff here controls the quality of your render here. So this is all this, these numbers here refer to these numbers here. So it's just a quick way of seeing if you've, you know, increased something and it's slowing it down or whatever. And then you can see your camera here and how big this render is as well. You can also zoom in and out using the regular view controls. If you turn this off, you can zoom in and out. This is just zooming in and out the, the image. Okay. So you can just zoom that out. If you press one, one, that's the actual size of the render. So this, this is the actual size of the render, uh, or I can zoom in if I want it to be bigger. Okay. Um, so you can keep your render, which is very common. You can, compare your render to another render. So click on this little camera icon and it's going to bring up this little toolbar and there's my render. And then I can click here to carry on rendering. So just move around here, for example, or turn on my 3D manipulation and just move around and then press this again. Okay. And then move around. And then if I want to actually see that and compare, I can press this and then compare between different images or I can carry on. So if I want to carry on, you can see that I can't move around now. I'm, I'm on this uh, viewing mode. So if I turn this little eye off, then it puts me back into the interactive mode. Okay. So just remember that it's a common thing to kind of uh, <laughs> figure out where you're like, Oh, I can't see any updates anymore. So you just, if you're clicking that you're looking at your snapshot and you can see the little blue eye there. So just click on that and then it'll go back to the interactive update. Okay. So that's an overview of the Arnold render view and you can see it's got some nice features in there. You don't always have to use it. You can still use the Arnold rend uh, the regular Maya render view, but it's just got those, those specific features like isolating and selecting and moving around, which does make it quite handy if you are changing things and you don't want, um, uh, an extra viewport in your view.